Before we get into this, let me just say that our project in this PSA contains major spoilers for Danganronpa V3 and the series as a whole. If you haven't played or watched an installment for some reason, click off this video and do those things now, please. Danganronpa Distrust is a series that focuses on Rotaro's killing game, and our goal is to reinterpret Danganronpa V3's ending. V3's ending was largely divisive among the fandom. In fact, I recently made a post on Reddit's Danganronpa subreddit comparing the Game of Thrones TV show's ending to V3's, and by doing so, I was able to gain further insight into the three stances the fandom has on the ending as a whole. I basically divided them into three groups, right? Group 1 likes the ending and think its meta nature is completely appropriate and nothing is wrong with it. Group 2 hates the ending and everything about it. And Group 3 thinks the meta nature of V3's ending was clever in concept, but wasn't executed well. When I finished V3 for the first time, I firmly fell in Group 2, but after thinking things over and seeing how other fans interpreted the ending, I believe I belong in Group 3. Now, for those of you who liked the ending, I know exactly what you're gonna say. V3's ending was great. You just didn't get the message, Taurus. Yeah, I did. Got the message perfectly. How they conveyed it was the problem. But before we get into that, let's go over the plot so we can refresh your memories. Danganronpa V3's story takes place shortly after the tragedy. Hope Speak Academy is open again, recruiting talented students from all over the world, and everything seemed okay. Until Thanos started summoning meteors and they started raining down on Earth like cats and dogs. During this time, a sickness begins spreading like wildfire, and world leaders start to realize that this very well may be the end of the world as we know it. But did they give up? No. Instead, they decide that if they can't save the planet, they could at least salvage humanity. And they task the Future Foundation with initiating the Gopher Project, a plan to send 16 individuals who are immune to the disease into space. Coincidentally, all 16 of them are students who attend Hope Speak Academy. But, but, there's a problem. They don't want to go. After all, they'd be leaving their loved ones behind, and who wants to do that? But they don't get a say in the matter, because a certain cult organization has been using the crisis to accumulate power. The remnants of despair. Upon catching wind of the gopher plan, they initiate the ultimate hunt to capture the participants. Cornered, the ultimates adhere to the Future Foundation's demands. False information is spread saying that the students are dead, preventing the despairs from prevailing. Or so they thought. As it turns out, the Future Foundation made a very big mistake. They unknowingly allowed Kukichi Oma, the new leader of the Remnants of Despair, on the spaceship that the Ultimates are boarded on, and he in turn stuck Monokuma aboard, allowing a new killing game to start. After all, what would be more despair-inducing than the last survivors of humanity killing each other? You see this plot? They spent five chapters foreshadowing it, and you know what? There's nothing wrong with it. So how, pray tell? Do you ruin a story this well constructed in the span of a single chapter by giving it one of the most outrageous, unforeshadowed, and ridiculous endings in history? That's how. In the final trial, Samugi, the mastermind, informs us that the deceased and remaining students were actually participants in a hit reality TV show based on Danganronpa's franchise, created by Team Danganronpa, and that the previous entries were all fiction within V3's universe. She also reveals that the students willingly participated in the killing game and were given fake talents, memories, and personalities in order to make them more appealing. This is terrible for a number of reasons, but first, let me tell you the message the game was trying to convey. So Team Danganronpa obviously represents Spike Chunsoft and Kazutaka Kodaka, while Sumugi in the audience represents us. We're the fans who want more and we keep pushing Spike Chunsoft to create more Danganronpa installments so that we can be entertained and they are the company responsible for ensuring that we're satisfied and they are pressured to ensure that they meet our expectations with us raising the bar every time. Because of this revelation, it raises the question of whether or not what Team Danganronpa, Sumugi, and by extension us are doing is bad. Because on one hand, what they're doing is basically murder, but on the other, this is what the cast wanted. This is what you wanted, to experience a new killing game no matter the cost. But this isn't what Spike Chunsoft was going for. What the game's really trying to tell us is that while everything about the cast of V3 that you've grown to love, and even the entire franchise may be nothing more than a fabrication of V3's universe, everything that you felt while making the journey was real, and fiction is what you make of it and can potentially influence us in the real world. Now in a symbolic sense, at least this is pretty decent, except for one thing. In order to allow players to make this comparison, they had to change the game's theme. Danganronpa V3's theme for the first five chapters was truth versus lies. It made you question things like, is the truth really worth revealing? And which is better, a comforting lie or a painful truth? 
But because of the plot revelations made in chapter 6 and its meta nature, the theme changes to reality versus fiction. Is reality all that matters? And how can something that isn't real have any impact on me? And to this end, Kodaka even made the ending ambiguous as to whether or not what Sumugi said was true. It is here where everything goes downhill, because the creators have seemed to have forgotten that Danganronpa V3 is a visual novel of the mystery genre. As a visual novel, the highlights of the game come from the story, character development, and interaction. The plot for every visual novel must be compelling and consistent in order to maintain the player's interest, and the characters are the people who make the journey realistic and full of life. Their development lets you see that they are progressing along with the story, and interacting with them allow you to understand who they are, what motivates them, and even allows you to empathize with them to a degree. The first two games and the first five chapters of V3 balance these elements excellently, but the ending of V3 shits on all of this because not only does it insinuate that what happened in the Hope Speak arc is fiction, and thus doesn't matter, it goes further and says that everyone in the cast that you've grown to know, protagonists included, were given false personalities, making everything that has occurred in the franchise seem hollow and meaningless. On top of this, despite it being a mystery visual novel, it ends the game with more questions than answers, as there are many contradictions between what Tsumugi said and what actually happened, and many plot points still remain unresolved, which is a big no-no. This leads the player to believe that they had accomplished nothing in the journey, and makes you wonder, what's the point of all of this? At least, that's what I thought. You see everything I mentioned about V3's ending being horrible? That was my opinion. Whether or not you like V3's ending, I think I can safely say that all groups will find a reason to enjoy this series. Look at it this way. If you didn't like the ending, you could look forward to us reinterpreting it and altering the bad plot points. And if you did like the ending, the mystery surrounding Rontaro and the killing game he participated in, as well as Samugi's role in this one, can be further explored. I just said all of this so you can understand my point of view when I started thinking about this project. Not everyone on the team has this view, mind you. Just me, as far as I'm concerned. Well, that's all I have to say. If you have any further questions, feel free to ask me on Tumblr, Twitter, Reddit, or anywhere else I'm active. Until next time.